I'm glad you mentioned that because see, you're you're a leader who is very uh, in tune to the people he leads as whole people, right? Yes. And, yeah. and you treat them as such. Yeah. And you build those connections and you lead them because you have a genuine concern and vested interest in them as a people excelling right. as whole as whole people and being well and advancing yeah. and whatever their goals are, right? Yeah. Um, not every leader approaches leadership with that mindset. Yeah. So for any for somebody that's had a leader who did not have that mindset and maybe they're either reluctant to be open yeah. about, you know, from a personal standpoint and, and get personal. Yeah. Or they've done it in the past and then somebody used it against them in yeah. the workplace professionally. Yeah. What would you say to that person in terms of not allowing the past yeah. experience? And, and past damage and hurt to yeah. hold them back from relationship building going forward. Yeah. First I would acknowledge that, man, that unfortunately that does exist where we have many people in leadership roles that are not what I would define as a leader, but they, 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 they operate with a title and it gives them a lot of control and they use that control to manage people versus lead people if I can say it that way. Okay. I would just encourage people to know that that's not representative of the of the whole because I really do feel there's a, a a way more people who really do lead in the way we're talking about open to building dynamic relationships with people understanding their teams, understanding their uh the people in their reporting structure. Can they do it with 100 people maybe not? Uh, but can they do it with a few? Absolutely. I would encourage people to be the olive branch too, if you're comfortable doing so. Because oftentimes, people who hold back um, maybe maybe having the same experience that 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 person may be experiencing. So that might have been how they've been led. And that's the only way they do it. They may have a culture of being private at work mm -hmm. and only being personal outside of work. Mm -hmm. I would just encourage people in what ways matters to them is maybe use, in this, uh, the, well, I guess there's books out there with all these techniques, right? But one of the things that I always thought about is, uh, it's called form, family, occupation, recreation, and message. Now it is something that came up in an old sales technique thing, but I'm, I, I've learned that it's a good way to strike hold, up hold, conversations. Hold on, slow down. Cause I, this is, this one's new to me. You said okay. that form, form and you give yeah. it to an F. F O R M. Yep. Yeah. And what does it stand for? Family, okay. Occupation, occupation, okay. Recreation, okay. And message, and it's oftentimes a way to build rapport. And again, this is something that um, I think it was a book called "How to Strike Up Conversations with People." As I was maturing in my career, I had to learn that there's gonna be a lot of people that I, I build relationship with or I meet that aren't exactly like me, um, yeah. that don't come from my background, maybe don't even work in the same industry I work in, but it's still it's still a skill that's required in life period to be able to strike up conversation with people. I'm, I can be at the baseball field. All right. Take, take work out of it. And I'm on a team. My boys are on a team with kids we've never played with. And all the parents are standing around watching, you know how it is. Some want to talk, some don't. Mm -hmm. Right. Hey, that's your son. Okay. Number, number eight. Okay, cool. Hey, my, my son is number 25. I'm, I'm Jamondre. Nice to meet you. That gets into family. Is that your only son? I've got twins family. Before you know it, there's a ten minute conversation around family. I actually might like this guy. I mean, or 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 this or this this lady. They seem cool. Maybe the boys later might become friends. We may want to hang out. You know, occupation. Now, depending on when this conversation, where it's happening, may or may not come up. Comes up on the golf course a lot. Same approach, but even at the field. Okay, cool. Hey, you know, what do you do? We get to talking about whatever you you know. Glad it's Friday. You know, at the bill. man, work's been crazy. Oh, really? What do you do? That gets into occupation. Right. And at some point it gets into outside of baseball. Right. Yeah. I was at the, I was at the field yesterday and I had a hoodie on the boys got me for my birthday. Uh, the basis said, I love playing golf. Hey, you golf, you ever been? So recreation. And then now if there was a message and if it is a relationship you want to build on, man, I, I, I'd love to grab lunch. Right. Maybe we should get, maybe we should connect or the conversation spikes something of, of something personal. Like, man, I've been dealing with such and such. Well, you know, my wife's a social worker, right? It's a side conversation. Um, and here's an agency that had, that offers this type of service. If you're interested, I can have her connect with you, right? And it doesn't have to always be self-fulfilling, but it gives a way to have conversations with people that are conversations that build relationships. If someone's showing a genuine interest in me, 
about my family, my boys, and they've seen them. Oh, yeah, we've seen your boys out here at the park playing for a while. I may not have never met them, but okay. And you, yeah, he, so complimenting your boys or, or just, you know what? Okay, now let's see where this goes. And the same thing could be done in a, a work environment. I don't care whether you're working at the gas station, McDonald's, the Amazon warehouse, in a, in a corporate function, in investment banking, whatever, lawyer's office. Being able to talk to people, just period, is, is an undervalued, I think, um, skill that we might think this comes naturally to people but it doesn't always people who can do it have really worked at it right it builds confidence and gives you a way to communicate uh no matter what environment you're in but that's one i always share even share with the boys like you know we be on teams all new all the time like how you get to know your friends i I asked them i was like so you've been to three practices now tell me all your teammates names do they have brothers and sisters like it's because that's where it starts right you take a genuine interest in a person or people around you it just yeah. becomes natural to our conversation earlier and then whether it be later in life a few months down the road you've been nurturing this relationship with somebody without an end game in mind yeah. but something comes up and says hey i heard you you know you mentioned that you really enjoy mentoring people my aunt has a son who's in college yeah. that's debating doing x y and z would you mind speaking to them sure here's my number have them call me yeah. Right. Or, hey, my son or daughter or someone just graduated yeah. or just got laid off. I heard that you're in a position of whatever, whatever. Yeah. Uh, would you mind just having a conversation with them? That's what I mean. Versus. Yeah. Getting pinged on LinkedIn. And, hey, here's how I can help you. You want to talk? It's like, no, I don't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know what I mean? But if yeah. I happen to know that person through some other channel and they then happen to be in a position to where we could have a business relationship later when it makes sense, that's different. Yes, but the but the building of that relationship out of the gate is not, in my opinion, should not be with that in mind. Now, if you're in the sales industry and you have KPIs and metrics, I I get it. I may not be talking to you, <laughs> I'm, but I'm talking about yeah. in the the general realm of building relationships. Yeah. Because even if you are in sales, almost every every sales organization I've been a part of uh, in my life has started with build a prospect list of who you know. Yeah, right. And if who you know that who you know list is not a list of relationships you've already nurtured, those conversations are quite interesting, yeah, to, to say the least. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and, it's, and it's, even if, and even from a sales standpoint, um, companies want you to nurture relationships because absolutely. they want to maximize the business and yeah. build a relationship to where there's brand loyalty and they don't have to worry about losing somebody. Right. And it becomes more than just about the pricing of your what you're offering, right? Yeah. Yeah, because people are buying people are buying from you and your service offering or your brand more so than they even buy the company. That's why a lot of times when a person leaves a company, especially if they're sale, at the some point when the clients go with them, no matter no yeah. matter what you what no matter what agreements you sign over time, that client's still going back with that person because of who they are, the relationship they built and the service they provided. Yeah. 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 And I like your your concept and your idea of having a nurturing, um, authentic relationship yeah. building approach. Yeah. It's much broader than just the ask, right? right exactly. Um, which feels phony. Yeah. It yeah. adds pressure. It makes it, it tense and tight, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then also, I would imagine when you take that approach and you just do it in your everyday life, yeah. and you've been building relationships and making it and, and having intentionality behind it, it's like practice. Yeah. And, and you've kind of, work that muscle yep. and, fl- and flex that skill. And so yep. when you need to apply it in the workplace, you've yep. already had that practice outside of work with no pressure. Yeah. And now it those is. relationship building skills translate into the work, the workplace. Wouldn't you say? It does. It does. It's like, it's like it becomes like compounding interest, right? It's it the work you put in and, and if it becomes a habit, right? Talk about things become a habit, just like it can go back to working out. Once the workout becomes a habit versus a diet, then the benefits just naturally start to show up. You know, if you're yeah. on a medication, then over time you can get off that medication. If you, yeah. um, you know, had a goal to build muscle, over time you see that muscle gain because of the consistency in the relationship you build with that new diet plan or health plan or gym routine. Yeah, it, it becomes second nature, and then it shows up at work. Like you said, if, if you're if you happen to see somebody at the coffee machine, you know. Hey, how you doing? Oh man, it's great weather today, isn't it? Right, and it turns into a much larger conversation. Or you see that person over and over again. 
yeah. or you happen to be on the first three minutes of a call if you're in a corporate environment and things are virtual where you're waiting on everybody to get there and how was your weekend? It just becomes uh, natural. And then if you're in an environment where uh, you have the resource groups like that, that a lot of companies have right now, business resource groups or, or whatever the case may be to give you space and opportunity with this more remote workforce to engage with each other, even in that environment, it becomes more natural. Yeah. Right. Because it becomes just a, na- a natural part of who you are and how you interact with people, people. Yeah. And then over time, the the deposit you're making in those relationships and how people remember you may, re- may come back as a return. But that's, again, that's not the outset goal. It just, I've just seen it so much, Jonathan, that I've just seen it happen so many times. Yeah. Now over that 20 years I've spent in, in corporate spaces and the relationships that I've built and garnered and uh, have been very appreciative of uh, have been proven fruitful. But at the end of the day, they were kind of built in uh, based on the like genuine care about what's happening in people's lives and getting to know people. Yeah. And then it also makes me think about uh, internal mobility, what we call internal mobility, which is a, a person's ability to yeah. move around within a company mm-hmm. in different roles, maybe, um, there's not a need in their existing role in the company yeah. anymore, but they have a skill set that's transferable to other teams or other departments, yeah. right? So yeah. if you've if you made it a process of building relationships in the company cross functionally, yeah, and knowing people across the organization, yeah, and, and you become a valued person within the organization, yeah. If somebody finds out that maybe your job is being eliminated and you're not needed in that capacity anymore, the odds yeah. of people finding a place for you because they want you in the organization right. is much greater when you build those relationships and you've done that. Absolutely. Because in that example, it becomes more about you, the person and who people know and what they know about you. And, and of course your brand and what you've delivered than your skills. Cause you're not doing a skill match at yeah. that point. It's like, okay, this person, we know over the years have has performed. They get along with everybody. Um, they deliver. They're honest and transparent when something's going on and going wrong. So we know that, and they know now our company. They know our industry. It would behoove us to find a spot for them. And that's where the out of those people we talked about earlier, like you, you got say this expanded network of relationships. Now we're talking about in in your workplace. Again, no matter where you're working at, are you accountable? Right? Mm-hmm. Um, have you nurtured relationships and not um, created negative experiences with people. Cause you, man, I always tell people, you never know who's going to be in a room you're trying to get into, or you never know who's going to be talking about you when you're not in a room positive or negative. Yeah. So be careful when you're on a project and there's somebody that's making your life difficult, not to wear that on your sleeve as, as, as that's who they are forever. Yeah. Right. Still be mindful of that because then six months from now, that person could be in a different role and building an organization and building the team. And now it's like, I would never want that person on my team. Yeah. Whereas you might want them to say, man, if I'm building, if I'm building a team, these are the five people I want. How can I go get them? You want to yeah. be in those, you want, you want to be in those conversations and a good way to be in those conversations is <clears throat> letting people know who you are authentically taking care to, to be interested in who they are and what they have going on. If you can add value, great. Right but just making sure that your brand is at least, or your relationship is at least in a place where they would consider you. Yeah. Right? And, and, and that just comes from being authentic in what you're doing and engaging with people. Right. Yeah. And even if, if you make a decision that yeah. you want to make a transition, a yeah. career transition and do something different, right. Yeah. But you don't have any direct experience in that job per se. Yep. If you built a strong enough personal brand and made and built those relationships people will give you an opportunity because they know what you bring to the table as a whole. Right. right? And they know you're a person that can be relied on to get things done and this, that, and the other you have, they know what transferable skills you have, even if you don't yep. have the perfect picture in terms of what they're looking for in the job description, yep. the odds of them giving you an opportunity to change course yep. is much greater when you've yep. nurtured those relationships. Yeah. And you get a little bit of a runway and I'll call it either runway or the umbrella protection, right? Because if someone's yeah. going to sponsor you and speak on your behalf and say, hey, we should give this person a chance, yes, there it generally comes also with a little bit of cover to say, hey, I know this is not the perfect fit. You might not have done this for 10, 15, 20 years, but here's how I'm going to support you in these early days of you picking this up. And I understand that you're not going to be perfect at it because you've never done it, but I'm going to give you some grace versus being upset with an environment, go out and think the grass is green on the other side, which it could be or not, and then having to prove yourself in an environment and chase a role without those relationships and having to build those relationships yet again, right? Yeah. No matter where you go, you should build them, but it's different than landing somewhere and rebuilding than leveraging and building the relationships where you are 
and when the right opportunity comes up, being able to uh, benefit from those relationships that have been built over the years. Yeah, absolutely.